Hello everyone, welcome to day two of the Greater Philadelphia Yarn Crawl. And yesterday I dealt with stores that were all outside of the city limits, but today the goal is to hit all the stores that are within city limits today. So that is seven stores I have planned today. And typically seven stores would give me pause, but considering that they're all within Philly, I feel like it's possible that I can just park at one place and actually end up hitting two stores. I'm hoping for that to be the case today. It is a little bit of a rainy day today, which is true March fashion in Philadelphia. I do have to go get gas. Basically yesterday when I came home, I went to bed at like 5 p.m. and I didn't wake up till after 8 a.m. because my sleep schedule is so off. This is also not my preferred car for today because parking is a bit of a nightmare in South Philly. And I would prefer to use my smaller car, except some asshole decided to break the window on the driver's side which would have been fixed by now if itty bitty did not completely flummox the mechanic who came to replace the window i feel like mechanics are completely flummoxed by smart cars i don't know what it is about smart cars that completely flummoxes mechanics it is what it is yeah so i'm gonna get some gas we're going to hit some yarn stores today which is pretty exciting I just came out of the Weaver house and imagine my surprise when I arrived at the building and it was a high school. It was almost like, can I even enter this? But as it turns out, Weaver house is a couple rooms inside of what used to be Bach High School. It turns out Bach High School closed down a couple years ago and the building was left to be dilapidated for a couple years and then someone bought it and they're now turning it into a business center. I'm glad they're reusing it. it it's still wild to me though <laughs> because it's very strange to enter into a high school building without going through a metal detector first. But it was just like the same architecture style as my high school. <laughs> the Weaver House as its name suggests is mostly focused on weaving. They have lots of different threads more catered towards weaving and people who weave tend to go for a lot thinner thread than most yarn places so most of this was way thinner than fingering stuff. <laughs> I still found some nice things here so they had a trunk show by Kira Wiggins which I've bought some of Kira Wiggins stuff during the New Jersey wool walk last year but this is the first time I've seen batting by her. And this is such a lovely color. I don't think it mentioned what that color was, but I mean, this was their yellowish orange, which was pretty nice. I found out that they do not spin any of their own yarns there at the weaving house, but they are in the process of trying to start a spinning class in the next coming months. But I found some recycled sari silk ribbon. Like most of their stuff has labels like this. They have some linen in there, a lot of linen. They have some cotton in there as well. And you can buy rug wool up to like three pounds at a time, which is like, <laughs> for reference, if you go to like the cheap craft stores, like the chain craft stores, usually it only goes up to like a pound at a time. <laughs> they had a little collection of yarn here, a little sampler. So I decided to get a little bit of the sampler, just to try out some of the different yarns, make something cute. They also have a huge dyeing section as well, like natural dyes and selection. And I found this little box set, the Studio Formulas box set. And this doesn't have the dyes in them themselves, but it has the different recipes and different color swatches. So I'm intrigued to go through it and see like what's available out there. And that's what I got from here. So it was a nice calm little store. It's interesting how it's revitalizing the community without a bunch of construction going on because Philadelphia is no stranger to construction. And I believe I can get to the next door without moving from my parking spot, which would be amazing. So I'm going to see if that's the case. And if so, I'm gonna head off to the next shop. I just came out of South Philly Yarn and Craft and it happened to be a 12 minute walk from where I was parked which honestly finding parking in South Philly would be the same amount of time. So I was able to get, have a nice little walk in the neighborhood. This is such a cute little store. <laughs> it's a very small store, but it does have a nice little curated collection. 
It's definitely like younger millennial Gen Z type of vibe, which is very unusual when you enter most yarn stores. I managed to get some unusual brands here, some brands I've never seen before. There's some nicely colored tissue paper. I saw this for the first time, Geektastic Fibers. It's like with great yarn comes great responsibility. And this is self-striping. There was actually a set of socks made with this yarn, although that was sock yarn and this is worsted yarn. So it's a little bit thicker than that but like such a nice colorway, yeah? This is Kay Lauritsen, the dyer I've never seen before. They actually had a little biography of this particular dyer on the wall of the store, which is a big clue that someone's local when that happens. He apparently got into dyeing because he wanted to experiment with different colorways. And I mean, with this particular skein, you got a slam dunk, sir. <laughs> it's a very nice colorway here with the green, the little spits of the brown. There was this also dye mad yarns. It has like a goose with sunglasses on it. Never seen this brand before either. And this particular color is called lame duck. <laughs> so uh, obviously I had to go for a pun like that with lame duck and then you got a goose on the front. It's called Jenny Worsted. It's merino and alpaca. Yeah, this is also just, this one was merino and nylon and this one is all merino. It was a mostly merino type of place. This is better knit. And this is recycled cotton, this yarn. It seems like Better Knit's status quo is getting recycled fibers out there, which is great. <laughs> the last skein is made by the store's owner, Ashley. So this is hand-spun yarn. It's reclaimed acrylic. It has the store logo on it there. And she has a spinning machine right in the shop and she's able to spin the yarn. Although she does say, she did say that she had more time to spend before she opened the store. This store has only been open for about six months. There are also other things around there as well. There were some kits that were sold. I didn't really pick up any of the kits, but there were some cross stitching kits, which had some Philadelphia themed things. And by Philadelphia themed things, I mean SEPTA and Gritty. And there was also like a little cute idea where there's like a water tumbler with a crochet hook and some yarn inside the tumbler. There was also a table in the middle of the store and actually on the table had like some things where you can just pick up the crochet and knit and work on her community banner. She's actually in the process of working on a community banner that she's gonna be displaying on the back wall of the store. I'm gonna insert a quick picture of that here. Compared to some of the other shops that I've seen, this store has a lot of activities packed for the four days. <laughs> I'm very glad to see that this is like a local yarn store that is trying to build a community from pulling like yarn that you don't typically see elsewhere or like crafts from the local areas. Also like taking part in an event like this. Yeah, I'm very glad that I stopped by there. So I know I'm probably going to need to drive for the next one because I have used up over half of my two hour limit at this particular spot. I think the next door is probably like a half hour away by walking, which means it's probably just better off to drive. But yeah, it's also getting hot out here. It is a very, very hot summer's day. <laughs> Or a spring day. It's not summer yet. It's, this is March. This is March. I just came out of Loop, which is a very nice shop. It's just a small little one room shop, but it was bustling today. It had a lot of people in there, which is very, very good for a yarn shop, which is also in one of the busiest areas that is part of this yarn crawl. So this is literally on South Street, which is pretty much in center city. It's good that they have the traffic. This is the one shop on the store that I can't remember if I've been to or not. If I have been to it, I was like 12 years old at the time, which was a long, long time ago. And we are near a train somewhere. <laughs> I got a couple brands that I, I usually would have avoided, not because they're bad brands, but because I see them everywhere and I try to get more unique brands when I go on crawls. But I did see some colors that I don't typically see or like colors that are nice. First one that I got was the Coastal Cotton from the Queensland collection. I really, really love this cotton. Oh, it says pure soft cotton. Yeah, it is 100% cotton. I've used this before and it's such a nice cotton. <laughs> I really love using this cotton in. It's the first time I've seen this particular uh, cotton on the crawl on for Philly. The other one that I don't typically get because I see them everywhere is Madeline Tosh but they had this absolutely gorgeous yellow and it was in their 40% off thing. So I'm excited to find something to use this for. 
one of the nice things about loop is the fact that they actually dye their own yarn. They don't spin it there, but they do dye their own yarn there and they have natural dyes. So they have their own brand of yarn. So I made sure to get some of that. This is sea glass. It's a nice green and it's 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon. So you got like that soft squishiness feel, but it's also going to move pretty smoothly when you use it. This looks like it's a fingering weight. And I can't believe I said that with a straight face. <laughs> you say a word enough times, you can say it with a straight face. This was another brand called Spun Right Round. And this, they said, was the colorway that was made specifically for the store. I don't know if it's for the crawl for the store or just for the store. But it was nice to see that colorway. So I, of course, had to get it. And then they put everything in this nice little tote bag. There you go. So it's a nice little shop. I'm very glad to have visited it, although the only downside that I had is through no fault of their own, but just the nature of Philadelphia is, it is a pain to park around here. <laughs> uh, it took me three tries to get a spot. The first two tries didn't work because I found out after I got out that I parked at a no parking area, which obviously you can't leave the car there. And there were two times that I tried to park that I couldn't because the car, there was a car behind me and they didn't leave me enough room to reverse. I am parked in a side street, I think. <laughs> I think I'm parked in front of somebody's home. <laughs> this is not near the next stop enough to walk, although now I'm more willing to consider it. <laughs> yeah, this is like one of the stops on the route that if you have the ability to take public transportation, I would. A bus does come down the street that the shop is on. And then on the way back, I got myself a Rita's, which if you are not from Philly, uh, this is the citywide classic treat for a cold day. It's basically sugar and water and it comes in many flavors and is delicious. This is not a sponsored video. This is me just helping the tourist board. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the driver's seat of the car, get resituated and head east to my next job. I just came out of Yarnforia and it is a lovely little store. It was mostly just one big room. You kind of just walk around and they have yarn stuffed up. It's a very small store, but they had some brands in there that I've never seen before. This is from California, I think, but it's like hand dyed. It's Freya or hand paints. Yeah, the color's called Mint Julep. It's a nice minty little color. They have this indie dyer called Essence of Autumn. I ended up getting two of hers. Apparently she's not in very many stores right now. She's just in a couple, but I am intrigued to try it out. It's like, it's a lot to say. When I've been on four different yarn crawls and I haven't seen her in any other store before, <laughs> but it's these absolutely beautiful colorways. I have seen Earth in other stores before, but I saw this color. I knew if I didn't leave with it, I would regret it. So I got it which to be fair has happened with me to Earth Yarns before. This is Stitch & Company. They are local. I, I'm not sure how local. I There was a thing, I read it, I forgot to take a picture of it. Definitely like sustainable, ethically sourced, plant dyed. They're working on like not necessarily mass producing but saying small and this is very, very squishy. And then they had a brand in there I've never seen before but they had a lot of it in the store. It's called Misty. This is Misty Alpaca. This is the chunkier yarn and this, is a very very squishy yarn in itself i just loved it <laughs> and that's what i got there oh no i got one more thing i got one more thing there's also ansula i think this is called they had a lot of this like stellina yarn i've never really seen that brand before this is the one that's hand dyed in fresno california but ethically sourced in canada which is good also i'm assuming the store owner she uh was the one who was manning the cast register she had on like the Romanesco sweater, which is something I've only ever seen online. I haven't seen in person and it still looks stunning. <laughs> like I saw some samples of some things that I only saw online, which is nice. And there's two little dogs around the store and Maple is very yippy. <laughs> it's kind of like a little like Scottish Terrier type of dog. And I asked if it was okay to pet and the store, the store owner was like, yes, she's barking because no one's petting her. So I attempted to pet her, but she was like, nah, not you. <laughs> but, uh, they also were offering free massages 
at this particular store too. So I decided to try out the free massage because hey, I don't get a chance to every day and it was amazing. It's just like a nice way to calm down because it was very bustly inside the store. I'm glad they're getting all the business, but it was a nice way to just take out, take a breather. The person who uh, gave me the massage, Sydney, he did a very, very nice job. They gave me this card to get me 10% off of their next visit or my first visit because I've never used them before but like, amazing service so at this point i've got a bit of a quandary ahead of me be because this is center city philadelphia parking was difficult and i found a parking lot when i came back i have been parked in so i'm going to need help to get this taken care of because obviously i'm not gonna crush the other car and attempt to get out that would be stupid but i may eat first so i'm not dealing with this hungry <laughs> hopefully by the next time I start talking to you guys about the next door. Obviously, I will have gotten out. <laughs> I just came out of Modern Transitions and it's an adorable little shop. Modern Transitions main focus is dyeing, particularly with natural dyes. But they do have a nice little yarn selection. They also have like a Sinograph kit, which I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it looks like a form of photography. I didn't get as much yarn here, but they had some very good books. They have this book called True Colors. It seems like a worldwide sampler of different natural dyes and pigments, which the pictures in here are stunning. And it's all these different natural guys and uh, dyes. And in all honesty, I really, really love studying about color, even if it's not related to yarn. I did get my degree in art history. So it was really interesting to find out about how these different colors are made because I find that when it comes to making stuff, a huge factor in why things are made the way they are are the materials that are available and the uh, way that the materials are able to work. <laughs> and then there's this other book called The Book of Earth, which is talking about how they found all these different colors from like, ochre and like all the different colors of dirt, which is also really, really interesting. Especially since I've often wondered, how does someone look at dirt and know it gives them that color? I'm hoping that book will answer it a little bit. And the last book I got was a go-to guide for tie-dye success. I am a huge tie-dyer. You've seen these shirts and a variety of the videos, they keep popping up. My tie-dye skill set is very, very basic and I'm hoping this will help me elevate it just a little bit more. <laughs> they have some yarn that has the shop's label on it, Modern modest transitions and it's dyed in the shop the store owner melanie was very gracious in letting me go back into like her back room to see the whole dyeing station and it turns out they actually have a couple fats on the stove right now as part of a community dye where people can just buy a mini skein from her and they can dye the skein in the community fat and like, experiment with different colors. The fat itself can like, stay on the stove for at least a week, which is pretty good. <laughs> I saw this other brand I've never seen before. It looks like Queen fiber. Like I imagine it's a combination of like Queen and King. I'm not sure. It's, a sign it's from London, but this was just such a nice colorway. And then I got some roving. So they had some roving. They had some felting kits. I'm sure that's why the roving was there, but I'm probably just going to spin this up into a really quick fiber. She double bagged this, but this is gum Arabic powder. I believe it is a bonding agent. Yeah, plant-based binder. I did ask more about this as I was buying it and it turns out that it's not going to serve the purpose that I wanted it to serve, which was to help bind some of the rose dye. I'm still gonna have to stick with alum, alum for that, but this is still something I'll be fun to like experiment with. And that's what I got here. And it was a very, very delightful little store. Like the previous two stores I was at today, the problem was parking. <laughs> a lot of street parking in this area. I am actually at a mall right now. I'm very thankful that I found a mall because you don't have to pay for parking in a mall and you're allowed to loiter. <laughs> but I've got two more stores left for today. I'm making good time. It's like about four o'clock-ish, although I am considering stopping to get food. <laughs> Maybe something to go. There's a nifty 50s nearby. I'm tempted to just get an order of fries. <laughs> oh yeah, I also forgot to mention. So Melanie was actually talking a little bit about how the yarn crawl came together. 
because the people who were in line in front of me like, wanted to know who was the mother of the crawl, like whose brainchild was it? And it turns out it's a community-based endeavor. <laughs> Several of the yarn store and owners had multiple customers come and go like, hey, why don't we have a yarn crawl? And so several of them got together as a group. It's like, let's just have a meeting. And that's how this yarn crawl came to be, which I feel like some of the other yarn crawls that I've been a part of were just started with like one person and they reached out to everybody else. But in this case, it was definitely more of a community base and the marketing that I've seen so far actually reflects that. <laughs> I came out of Kelbourne Rollins. I was looking forward to this one. Kelbourne Rollins yarn I've been seeing all over the place. I've been on other yarn crawls and I've seen their yarn and like, I've gotten out on the other yarn crawls but here in Philly I held off because I wanted to buy the Kelbourne yarn at the Kelbourne store. It is packaged here in Philly. They get the fibers from all over different places in the world and then their warehouse is right next to the store and you can actually look into the warehouse from the store and as it turns out the warehouse bit came first and then the store itself has only been open for six months. They actually did have other yarns other than Kelbourne Woolens in there but I got mostly Kelborn woolens. They have several different types of yarn. It's mostly wool, but they do have cotton and they have some linen mix. These are their perennials. So their perennial is 60% superwash merino, 25% surrey alpaca, 15% nylon. And this is so soft and squishable. This was the best feeling yarn out of their whole inventory that I felt. And they did have mini skeins, but honestly, I love the feel of the yarn so much. I kind of want to work these two together in some sort of shawl or cowl or something like that. Because those colors go together so nicely. And then they have cotton. So this is Mojave. This is 60% cotton and 4% linen. And look at how vibrant that blue is. They had another cotton skipper. This is just 100% uh, Tanguise cotton. And I don't typically go for the mustard yellow, but this just like stood out to me. It's a nice soft cotton as well. This is their Andorra. So this is 60% merino wool, 20% highland wool, and 20% mohair. And this is the softest of their wools. They have at least four different wools. This is Camper, so this is just 100% wool. And it's not the only 100% wool that they had, but I feel like the different names that they have here means the wool got sourced from different places because not all the wool feels the same. This is the softest of 100% wool that I was able to get. This is the only yarn, not of the Kelborn Woolens brand that I bought while I was there. So this is Misha and Puff Studio. I think I saw this in another store. I haven't seen it before this crawl, but I decided to get it here and I just really love the colorway on this one. And they gave me this very nice bag. Go with it. And the last thing I got was a kit. This is a amigurumi kit for Herman the Hermit Crab. And this has their Germantown yarn, which is kind of like their rough and hardy wool. Like actually, I remember like being on another yarn crawl and I saw the Germantown, I was like, ah, oh, there's a Germantown in Philadelphia. And then I find out that the yarn is from Philly. It's just a very cute amigurumi thing and I'm looking forward to making it. It was a dog friendly store. Someone brought their dog in and they were very accepting of the dog. This is also the first store to offer masks. We're kind of on the edge where the pandemic is as about done as it's gonna be done. I think COVID is gonna be like the flu where it never fully goes away. But they offered masks at the store, which was a nice gesture. And they also had like a nice food spread with like grapes and cheese and La Croix. They had some very good fibers that were there. It was a pretty nice tour. <laughs> After Kelbourne Woolens, instead of shopping, stopping by the car like I usually do to drop off everything, I just went straight to the next shop because even though it was a four minute drive, I didn't feel like dealing with parking again. So I decided to take the 17 minute walk, which I mean, I'm healthy enough, it's all good. Wild Hand is a cute little store. I wanted to make sure I hit Wild Hand on a particular day because they had several trunk shows there and one of the trunk shows that was there is a person who I met on another yarn crawl, Alyssa from Back Pocket Fibers. <laughs> I met her up in Maine and she said she was gonna be here. So it's like, ah, oh, we gotta meet up. So I wanted to make sure I hit this wild hand on the day that she was gonna be there. And that was today. Obviously I left with some of her stuff, but I also got some stuff particular to this store. This is also the most I've spent at any yarn store. I totally blew my budget, but to be fair, my friend was selling roving and 
I wanted to buy her robing. <laughs> so I know this is a good, this was going to be my biggest splurge this trip. And once you see it, you'll understand. This is Ramblet top. She dyes the uh, stuff herself and she also spun some of the yarn herself too. And like she sources the fiber. Like she's actually done an internship at a farm. So she's been able to shear sheep and like see it from like sheep to yarn. So you have this nice color combination of the green and the pink. It's all in the same. A roving and then there's another roving right here this is pink yeah cheviot i think or cheviot i think this is called and then this is a pink and purple roving and this is just a very nice variegated colorway and then she had this absolutely exquisite merino and silk when i saw this on instagram it's like oh i i want that <laughs> so i'm very glad it was still there when i ended up back at the store <laughs> She also had some of her hand spun yarn. So this is some of Alyssa's hand spun yarn. It's a very nice color combination. There was a cotton yarn that she spun as well. It turns out that there's this organization called Fab Scrap where they contact companies who produce the fibers and take their scrap fibers and keep it out of the landfill. And so she was able to take some of their fiber and spin it into a yarn. So this is just such a lovely color. And then she dyed it herself. And then that's what I got from her. And then the rest of it I got from the store. So the store had some yarn brands that I've never seen before. So this is like Rosa Pomar Sago. I couldn't tell if all these brands were like the same company or there are multiple brands, but I ended up just getting the one in case they were the same. I'm not sure. But the thing that makes me think they might be the same despite the different name is the fact that the illustrations are in a very similar style and the label colors are all the same color. So it's definitely something I'm gonna have to research a little bit more. Then I got another spindle. So this is the first time I've actually seen one of these in person. And I mean, I have an Ashford spindle. I know they're pretty good quality, but it's the first time that I've ever, I've actually seen a spindle like this in person. And I'm interested to try to see how it's different from the regular drop spindle. And then the last thing I got was a punch needle kit. I've never tried punch needle before. I honestly do not need another craft because I keep trying so many different things, but I figured this was an easy way to have everything in one place and see if it's something that I like. Yeah, that's everything that I got at Wild Hand and it was nice and bustling. It is a two room store, even though it does not seem like it. <laughs> there is like a little passageway that leads to most merchandise, but most people were not aware of that. <laughs> and then after that, I like walked back up to my parking spot. <laughs> had a nice little walk and I've done enough for today. I hit the seven I wanted to for today. I'm gonna head home now. I'm back home and overall it was a very good day. I did get into an accident during the yarn crawl, which was a statistic that I did not want to have, but it happened at the Wawa where I was filling up my gas and it was just a small fender bender. Nobody got hurt. It's literally less than a mile from my house. I'm still not very happy that it happened. <laughs> But thankfully no one got her. I'm just counting the uh, blessings there. Uh, yeah, like the yarn stores themselves were delightful as predicted. The parking was a menace, which is why I wish that the window wasn't punched out of the other car. Because I would have taken the other car today because the smart car is better at parallel parking than this van that I'm driving. For other people who are like visiting Philadelphia, I highly, highly encourage for the stores within the city center, especially the ones that are in like Center City and South Philly, take public transport if you're able because parking is a lot down there. Things went pretty smoothly. I know I'm gonna finish tomorrow.